Many people out there feel that Saturday night brought you the best NXT TakeOver show of all time, of all time, of all times! And many more still believe that the WWE has their hands full trying to match up to NXT TakeOver New Orleans with WrestleMania 34 Sunday night. What did I think? Should you believe the hype? Or is it just a bunch of overhype? Well, let's dive into this review and see what the Schleg Daddy thinks about NXT TakeOver New Orleans. A couple of things that really stand out to me with the NXT brand as opposed to the main WWE brand. Number one is that I feel like I can go and watch these shows and actually know what's going on. Whereas I don't have to watch all the time in order to know, but they do a good enough job of setting the table for me that I do know and I do understand at least somewhat. Number two, the show is in five or six damn hours. So many of these big wrestling shows from WWE and other companies are just way too damn long. So, an NXT TakeOver show typically lasts like 2 hours 45 minutes, to this one I think was just a little bit north of 3 hours. That is so damn refreshing that a brand could have its big show and be well under 4 hours. What a novel concept. Number 3, these shows only happen every couple of months. So, you don't get burdened with multiple pay-per-views in a month, month after month after month. It's just basically at the big shows, you get this big show for NXT. Number four, I love the fact that these guys and gals are in developmental. They are trying to work to get to the point where they can perform in these type of venues all the time consistently. But here is a chance for them to shine on their own. Here is a chance for them to stand out on their own. And I really, really like that. I really do. Number five. Even though with the smarter and the hardcore, more passionate fans, they chant stupid things and they root for stupid things sometimes, I can say, at least I know when I tune in to watch an NXT TakeOver show, that the crowd is really going to be into it. And since I'm not there to experience it live and in person, that does help significantly with my overall viewing pleasure. Especially when number six... You've got Mauro Ronaldo on commentary. It helps. It helps a great big deal. Like when big things happen on an NXT TakeOver show, when important things happen, the commentators act like something big and significant actually happened. By God, they invoke a little bit of emotion and bother to show it. How nice. So it is these type of things I consistently look to even if sometimes I don't always like the show itself or some of the matches themselves or the characters that are being featured, it is these type of small things that I look to that seem to always keep me from totally burying an NXT show and make me okay with every couple of months, even though I don't watch the weekly show, spending a few hours on a Saturday night watching NXT TakeOver because there are enough things there to get me hooked at least a little bit. Well, the show kicks off with this ladder match for the North American Championship, and personally, I don't see why we need another belt in NXT, specifically your minor league fed having a mid-card title. But it is what it is. Cool. Whatever. I also don't understand what the big deal is about Ricochet. Um, to me, he just reminded me of literally hundreds of other guys in wrestling that could do the same crap as him. Maybe he does special and different stuff. I didn't see it. He was like a black Will Osprey to me. That should, that's what he should be called, is Black Spree. Because that's what he looked like to me. Just another flipping kicking dude. So I don't get it, but he was over huge with the crowd. Whatever. As far as the match itself, I've always been a fan of having one big dude in a ladder match. Because you can do different things. This one had two of them, and I felt like it worked really, really well both when they were going at each other and when they were doing crap with other people. Enjoyed how the match got everybody to have their shine and have their moments. And the guy that got by far the least amount of moments was Adam Cole, baby. And of course he was the guy that won because that's usually how this works. Uh, but everybody got their shine, both with stuff they did and stuff that they had done to them. 
I'm usually not a fan, as you might know, of these huge uh, spot fest and crash test dummy bullshit, but if you're going to do it, this is a night, this is a show, a moment where you should be doing it. It's your big show of the year, one of them in your takeover show, and because it's part of Mania Weekend as a byproduct, it is your biggest and most important. And your first ever North American champion is going to be crowned, whoever the winner of this match is. So yeah, it should mean more. The story should be doing whatever the hell you can to try and get your hands on that title. So that works for me. That's fine. Not all the time, but here it makes sense. I also feel like the right guy ultimately won, especially when you see what they were doing later on in the night with the Undisputed Era. Adam Cole won here as he should have. I know everybody loved this match, and there are many of you that might even think that this match was better than the main event, which I never thought I was going to hear people say, and a lot of the reviewers, I'm sure, and a lot of the fans are going to be talking about how this is five plus stars and what have you. Um, to me, this match just didn't do much for me in the grand scheme of things. I've seen too many of these bumpy, flippy, kicky, high spot, high impact matches for this one to really stand out or be that much different. I'm sorry. That doesn't mean the match was bad. And I haven't spent a lot of time shitting on it. I just want to make sure I point that out before everybody complains about what I said about this match. But it just didn't move the needle much for me. Because I've seen too many of these matches with similar type of spots and I'm just the type of guy that I only need to see it so often, uh every so often before it starts losing its effectiveness. And it's a shame because these guys were going out there and killing themselves and trying to do the best they can. And unfortunately, I largely didn't care. So next up was the NXT Women's Championship match. It's a rematch from NXT TakeOver Philly, if memory serves me correctly, between Shayna Baszler and Ember Moon. I know some apparently don't like Shayna Baszler at all and think she's boring as bricks. I saw one person trying to talk about how Shayna Baszler only gets her spot because of who she knows. Well, shit, that's how the real world works. And more importantly, that is how professional wrestling works. I find it funny that these same people that will shit on somebody like a Shayna Baszler will sit there and praise Cody Rhodes to the nth freaking degree, and I'm not here to necessarily compare characters, but compare situations. This is a dude who's only main reason to be able to get in the business, get the opportunities that he's gotten time after time after time is because of who the fuck his dad and his half-brother are. I'm sorry. That's just the way it is. And that's okay. He took advantage of a situation. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with Shayna Baszler doing the same thing. All that bullshit aside, I really enjoyed this match. I know the audience there didn't until towards the end, and that was probably the best part of the match. But to be fair... Going after that ladder match with all that other crap is going to be a really, really tough act to follow. And personally, for me, the style of wrestling fan that I am and the type of matches that I like, I love the fact that this match had a purpose for happening. Not only that, it had a purpose for happening that I knew about because I had watched the last match between these two. So it makes sense that there was going to be a rematch here. I also love the psychology that was demonstrated during this match, the story that was told. Like to me, once you're going with the dislocated shoulder and hitting it back into place, like all Mel Gibson lethal weapon style, you've got me hooked. And actually working that injury and not forgetting about it five minutes later and working it and working it and working it and making that a central element of the match and the finish itself, I loved it. I had a really, really good time watching this match. Maybe it makes me an old fuddy-duddy, but if you don't like it, fuck you. I enjoyed this match. And honestly, the timing's right. I'm assuming Ember Moon is ready to transition to the main roster, so she needed to drop the strap. She drops it to Baszler here. I enjoyed this match significantly, even though I'm sure most of you watching this would much rather prefer the latter match, and that's fine. It's just for me, this match was more my flavor on this night. So the Dusty Classic Final, which was a triple threat for the NXT Tag Team Championship. Um, first thing I want to call out is the Authors of Pain. I'm assuming they're close to moving up to the main roster. I'm curious as to whether or not they stick there or not. Because I'm unsure. I hope they do. But I wish they didn't go off of their feet so often, so easily, so early in the match. I don't think it helps them, especially considering the size of the other guys in the match. 
We need to emphasize that they're big. We need to emphasize that in this match, for this purpose, they are the monsters. They are the giants. Uh, we need to work that more. It doesn't help them, and I don't think it helps their opponents either. Uh, that said, um, this match was fine to me. And the finish just was outstanding. It worked on so many different levels. First of all, I love the fact that it was Roderick Strong turning heel because to me, Roderick Strong never does anything interesting and this would be the closest element I have of something interesting that he would do. It's also rare to get a real genuine surprise and it seemed like for the people especially that I know that watch the product week in and week out, this was a real shock, a real surprise. And it most certainly seemed like a real shocking surprise to the live audience. And that is awesome when you can actually surprise wrestling fans today with something good that works. That's beautiful. Not only that, I love the logic of it. With Roderick Strong being an old ROH guy just like O'Reilly was, just like Adam Cole was, to me, it was easy to piece it together. I don't care about the other storyline stuff or what Roddy's been in the past in NXT. Going back in history, it's like, okay, he's aligning with the ROH crew which is what I look at the Undisputed Era as. It's an ROH crew. Well, it would make sense that he would freaking align with them, especially when he can see how this is playing out and he can see the type of power that they have. Now the Undisputed Era has both the tag titles and the North American Championship, which is exactly what your predominant heel faction, even though the idiot fans want to cheer them instead of hating them, which is what would help them really get over and make the product better because fans can be stupid sometimes. Now your predominant faction has multiple belts as they should. I loved it. I love the finish, a legit swerve, a legit surprise, made the whole thing. The rest of the match didn't matter, frankly, because it didn't matter, because this was the thing that mattered, and it made everything flow and work very well. The NXT Championship, Andrade Cien Almas defending against Aleister Black. First things first. God damn, I wish I could have been Selena Vega's bodysuit. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. And no, I'm not sorry for saying it. All the other things we try to do to make men the bad guys and make men the villains, you got to give me something, and I'm going to have this, okay? You're not going to ruin it. Take your pansy-ass crap somewhere else. Screw you. The match. Damn that bodysuit. My goodness. Maybe if you don't want me talking about it, then bother to wear pants that actually covered up. I'm just saying. I personally have been fascinated by the growth in Almas over the past year from being a guy I looked at and be like, what the hell is the big deal with him? To like, oh, okay, he's legitimate now. And a lot of that has to do with being associated with Zelina Vega. Like, this is a, a perfect situation where you see that the wrestler was helped by the manager, the manager was helped by the wrestler. It was a great relationship for all involved. And I can also say confidently that Aleister Black is now somebody that I do enjoy watching. Like, I get it a little bit. And he comes across to me as a little bit different. He's got some cool factor to him. I always am concerned about how a guy like him translates to the main roster, but I feel like he actually could translate to the main roster. So I feel like I could be invested a little bit in him as a performer now and have some faith that it will go well once he gets up to Raw or SmackDown. I enjoyed this match a lot. Um, won the match of the night, I don't think so. Uh, but, that, but that's okay. I thought the match was pretty good. I especially enjoyed the mostly clear-cut heel-face dynamics of the match in terms of, for the most part, the crowd was against Almas and behind Aleister Black. The way wrestling should really work. When you have a clear-cut heel who can do some heel stuff, or at least the crowd can stay enough behind as a heel to where they really get behind this guy as a babyface, it just it helps the match so much, and it did here. I don't know if Almas does a ton of the heat-getting things. That's more of the Selena Vega part, but it works, and it comes together. The fans rejoiced for Aleister Black winning, and I thought it was okay. 
Uh, makes me wonder if Almas is ready to go make a, a Raw or SmackDown after Mania debut on the main roster. Could be definitely possible. I do wonder, though, how Aleister Black is going to work as uh, your brand's main champion. I, I look at him and I'm like, is he really like a champion guy right now? Or is he just a guy that is about character and story? And to me, that's more what he is. He's a character and story guy. And character and story guys can be huge stars. I just don't know that him being champion works for me. Could be wrong, but right now, seems kind of odd. And then, of course, brings us to the main event. The grudge match. Johnny Gargano versus Tommaso Ciampa. You've been waiting for this for a long time. I gotta say again, it's refreshing to me in today's wrestling business when the baby faces are the baby faces and the villains are the villains. Like you have reasons to get behind the good guy and reasons to hate the bad guy. You don't have to worry about the fans trying to hijack or do all this other idiotic bull. They all love Gargano and they all hate Ciampa. It's great when I can still see this play out it absolutely makes it. It really, really does. And knowing that the entire time that the fans are so adamantly going to be behind Gargano and so adamantly opposed to everything that Ciampa represents is something, again, we just don't see much in wrestling today. To the point where I feel like disbelief has been suspended to such a level that I really worry about the safety of Tommaso Ciampa if they went out in public. Because I think these Gargano bots would sit there and not piss on him if he was on fire. And might attack him. Be like, Neckbeard's rage. But it's, it's, it's cool to see that though. To see people get emotionally moved in the way that it is designed to happen. Because that does not happen very much in today's wrestling. Um, it's even more refreshing to me to see a heel who doesn't want to be cool, who doesn't want to do this shit. He wants to be a heel. He embraces being hated, and clearly Ciampa does. Brilliant. Also brilliant. Hunter making the decision to main event this match. Your main title does not always need to main event. If the characters are better, if the story is better in a non-title match then that match needs to main event. And clearly to me, this was the main event of the night. This was the match that the most people were looking forward to. This is the match that needed to close the show. And when you look at the match, this is the type of grudge match that should go to that higher level. Like to me, when they're peeling back the mats and here's the exposed concrete and eventually Ciampa gets thrown into the fucking concrete back first, like you can feel that. And just the way this whole match worked out, you know, you could feel the emotion, you could see the story, you could see them trying to tell the history between them. And the finish even, where Gargano kind of gives Ciampa like one last chance at redemption, one last chance to come and do the right thing and come to his senses, and he doesn't do so. But Gargano's sitting there, and he could have just whacked him repeatedly, and he ultimately didn't because he couldn't just bring himself to do it. Like, again, giving you the dynamic of this is a really good guy even to a fault, and this guy is a really bad guy. Brilliant. Feels like old school wrestling. I have to be honest, though, at times, this match had me. In other moments, it was starting to lose me a little bit. It never fully lost me. But there were some moments I'm like, eh, come on, let's get to it. And one of the flaws of this match, as it is with most of the matches on these cards, like NXT TakeOver New Orleans and other wrestling shows, is that sometimes you will get so many crazy spots and so many crazy things that happen, and you get so many of these spectacular false finishes, that when you get to the actual finish, it doesn't feel like the actual finish, and it kind of falls flat. I don't know that the finish fell all the way flat here because ultimately the people got their redemption. They got what they wanted out of it. But it got to the point to me where it happened and I was just kind of like, eh. 
maybe this went a little too long. And maybe that's more so of a byproduct of the show, only having, what, five matches, and all those matches having a lot of time. You know, these matches tend to kind of blend in and be the same a little bit. Uh, but ultimately, the match had a story. They worked it. It worked really well. Gargano was clearly the babyface. Ciampa was clearly the heel. And both guys worked their roles nearly to perfection. I do want to point out to me that it is funny that we're celebrating the guy winning so he could stay in the minor leagues. Just saying. Do I think that this was a five-star plus match? Eh, I don't know. But it was really, really good. And it clearly deserved to main event this show. To kind of wrap this all up, my moment of the night had to be Roderick Strong turning on Pete Dunne and joining the Undisputed Era. It was a shocking, surprising moment that I don't think really anybody saw coming, and it really, really worked at that time. Uh, my match of the night, uh, Selena Vega and that bodysuit. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But in terms of actual wrestling matches outside of that bodysuit versus Selena Vega, I would have to go probably with the main event because it worked on so many different levels. It ultimately ended up being the match that I enjoyed the most, even though, like I said, there were moments where it was starting to lose me a little bit. The clear heel face dynamics of it, the story that was told, it made it the match of the night for me. The star of the night probably has to be Adam Cole. I know people are gonna to point to Johnny Gargano and all of this, but Adam Cole was in two matches on this card. A lot of this show revolved around him and the Undisputed Era, so I think as a byproduct, he kind of becomes the star of the night. Even though, from an in-ring aspect, he really didn't do all that much on this night, if we're being realistic here. But he still comes out looking really, really good, especially post-WrestleMania. Now, to answer the question of, is this the best NXT TakeOver show that there's been? Uh, the simple answer is probably yes. There's a part of me that, maybe it's just because I'm kind of an old cuss, that I get really annoyed when people get so effusive in their praise in the moment and immediately after the moment. Oh my God, this is the greatest thing ever. Oh my God. Like that type of stuff annoys me. It's just who I am. That's one of my flaws. It just kind of annoys me. But ultimately, they're probably right. Now, with there only being, what, three or four years of NXT TakeOver shows and you only do, what, three or four of them a year, that's not a whole lot of body of work to compare it to. So... How much does that really mean? But again, they are probably right. I'm just not going to be as effusive in the praise of it as you are surely going to see from a lot of other reviewers and a lot of other people on the internet and social media. And that's cool, whatever. Um, and I enjoyed this show quite a bit. There was not one really bad match here. Like I said, even that opening ladder match that a lot of you are going to call five plus stars and be effusive of, it didn't do much for me. But I wasn't bothered by it. I wasn't annoyed by it. I was able to get through the match quite easily. And I was able to get through pretty much everything on the show quite easily. And it was really nice, the fact that you can have a big show and it just goes a little bit over three hours. Imagine freaking that, WWE. How nice that is. The interesting thing about this is as much as I enjoyed the show as its kind of own one-off entity, I was looking for this show to give me reasons as well to want to get back into NXT and maybe start watching it weekly. And it absolutely did not do any of that. As a one-off show, it was great. Getting me to care about an ROH faction running amok, Shayna Baszler as your women's champion, uh, honestly, Aleister Black as your NXT champion, Johnny Gargano staying in the minor leagues. Eh. I looked at this show and it didn't give me all, that much at all, frankly, as to why I would want to start watching NXT after TakeOver. And to me, that would be a true sign of major success across the board is not only to have a great show, but also have a great show that gives you reason to tune in and watch more. And it only accomplished one of those two things. I have no real interest <laughs> in seeing what happens post NXT TakeOver with that NXT brand because a lot of the people that are being prominently featured, I just really couldn't give a crap about. I just don't care about. I care about Aleister Black, but again, I'm not sure that a title run by him excites me. And everybody else? Sorry. 
It's a great show. Doesn't mean that I'm going to be watching NXT after TakeOver. So it's like a great success and it failed all at the same time. Remember though, remember, that's just my opinion. And this is OTRS Central and I'm the Schleg Daddy. And it's not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. Or as everybody else is all giggly tits and probably jizzing on their mics and keyboards, I tried to at least bring some levity and sanity to NXT TakeOver New Orleans.